In this video, I want to continue talking about line number three so that we completely come to a, a full understanding of what variables are in JavaScript. So I'm going to add a new file and I'm going to do that by hovering over the source tab of the Explorer. And I want to type in variables.js like so. And then uh, I'm just going to copy in the code that we had here. We'll use this as a starting point. All right, so let's focus in on line number one. Let's just, first of all, let's make sure this still runs and let's go node. And this time we're gonna give it the new file name variables and we get the same result as before. Great. So what is a variable? I think I said at the very end of that previous lesson uh, that a variable is basically just a, a uh, an area in the computer's memory where we're storing a value. We're requesting or declaring our need for a new uh, variable, a space in the computer's memory where we can put information and retrieve information. And then we can, from that point on, continue to use that variable to, to store different values and retrieve those values back out throughout the, the lifespan of the application. So there are actually several different parts to the variable declaration statement in line number one. The first is the let keyword. Uh, and let's start start talking about the parts of speech in JavaScript. A keyword is something like let, and we'll see some other examples a little bit later, but essentially think of it like a verb in the English language. It's, a, it's an instruction to the JavaScript compiler that we want to do something, that we want to take action. So we want to create a variable with the name of X, and we're expressing that intent to JavaScript using the let keyword. All right. So that's the first part of it. And then the second part is the name of the variable that we want. So we're requesting that a area of storage, uh, a unit of storage is assigned to our application that where we can put things. But how do we reference that? Again, it needs a name so that we can get the values and put new values in memory. All right. Uh, and so that's usually called an identifier. We want to declare a new variable with the identifier of X. And we're gonna talk about naming our identifiers, naming our variables. There's some rules and some conventions that we need to follow as developers. All right, we'll come back to that at the very end of this lesson. Uh, now, before we get too far, there's actually a couple of different ways to, to declare a variable in JavaScript. The original keyword that you'll see used and used in 99% of all tutorials and articles and books and videos is the var keyword. And until recently, this was the only way that you could declare a variable. In the latest version of JavaScript, however, the recommendation is to abandon var unless you really need it use the let keyword instead or the const keyword, which we'll talk about in just a moment. If we were to save our application using the var keyword in line number one and then rerun it, nothing would change. So what's the problem with var? There are some, well, I guess there's there's two ways to, to kind of explain it at this point. The first is that its usage is very nuanced. It does stuff that somebody new to JavaScript may not anticipate the ramifications of until it's too late and there are problems in code. Uh, we'll talk about the var keyword and how it relates to scope and so on uh, in an upcoming video, but we need to introduce some more concepts before we can get to the point where that discussion is even interesting, okay? Um, so its usage is nuanced and the ramifications can be uh, pretty challenging uh, if you're just getting started. So that's why the people who decided what goes into JavaScript said, why don't we introduce a new keyword called let? It will work like most other programming languages uh, as you try to learn JavaScript, hopefully it won't be problematic. So that's why we have the let keyword. The other, uh, the other keyword for declaring a variable is const. And we use that whenever we want to express our intent to the JavaScript compiler that we do not intend for that variable to ever change its value. So what we initialize the value to, in this case, to seven, we wouldn't expect that to change throughout the lifetime of the application. And if we try to change it, like in the very next line of code, we can attempt to set it equal to six. I'll save that. 
Let's go over and try to run that code. We're going to get an error, and it actually is pretty helpful. It, it gives a little, a little caret right underneath the equal sign, and it says assignment to constant variable. That's the problem, and and the issue here is that we've said to JavaScript we never want to change that value, and then the very next line of code we say, yeah, uh, I'm going to s assign it a new value and set it equal to six, and it says can't do that. Okay, so for the most part, we're going to use the let keyword most of the time because that's the recommendation now uh, in uh, as we learn JavaScript. All right, so uh, just want to point out that we can uncomment out line number two as we assign the value of x to different values. And we can keep doing this as many times as we want to. So at this point in line number one, we've declared the variable, set it to the seven, then we've assign it the value of six, then five, then four. We can keep changing the value in the computer's memory. Uh, and what is the value in line number six? What's X's value? Well, the last time we assigned a value to it, it was four. So uh, the application now, whenever we run it, will give us seven because three plus four equals seven, right? So that's what we get in line number seven. Great. All right, so uh, I guess this should be obvious at this point. The equal sign here is actually what's called an assignment operator. This is how we assign a value into a variable. And we can keep assigning values as many times as we want, but we can only declare a value or variable one time. So if I were to try and come down here and say let x equals you know 7 again or let it equal uh, 8, I'm going to get an error. Whenever I try to run the application, the identifier x has already been declared. Again, you can only declare a variable once, but you can assign its value as many times as you want to after that. All right. So in line number one, not only are we declaring the variable, then we're also assigning its value right off the bat in the same line of code. And when we do that, it's a technique called initialization. This is actually two lines of code rolled up into one. Lines number one and two now are roughly equivalent to what we had before. Um, well, roughly equivalent. There is one difference here. At the end of the execution of line number one, what is the value of x? Well, let's let's find out. Console.log, and then we'll just say, what's the value of x at this point? And then let's run the application. And you can see that first value that's output above what we get now in line number 11 is the term undefined. We'll explain what undefined means in more detail a little bit later, but essentially it is what it sounds like. We've declared a variable, but we've not defined it. We've not put a value into it, so it's undefined, all right? And that's generally not something we want. It might be in some cases something we need, uh, but for the most part, we won't do that, it's preferable that at the moment of declaration, you also in, uh, initialize your variables if you can. All right, so that would be valid right there. Um, all right, so now let's finish this up and talk about the rules for naming our variables. Uh, the variable name itself, I think I've already referred to this as an identifier. And so there are rules for identifier names, and then there are some code conventions. And these are not enforced by the JavaScript compiler, but are rather things that are best practices as determined by the community of software developers who've come before you. So let's talk about those things which are hard and fast rules that will actually break your application. Rule number one is that all identifiers, all variable names, have to begin with either a letter, a dollar sign, or an underscore. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is that uh, the variable names can contain letters or numbers, dollar signs or underscores, but no other special characters and you can't use a space uh, in between you know, two words that you intend to be considered together as an identifier. Identifier can't have any spaces, all right? And then rule number three is that you can't use any keywords. So I can't do something like this. Uh, let, let <laughs> equal to eight. And if we try that, we're going to get a weird error. Let is disallowed as a lexically bound name, all right? And so it even if we were to scroll up just a tiny bit, it puts that those carrots right underneath the let, the second one, because we're trying to use that identifier, but 
it's a, already a keyword, right? So you can't do that. All right, so those are your own, oh yeah, there's one other rule and that is that variables, variable names identifiers are case sensitive. So we could do this. and it would be a perfectly acceptable application. Um, these are two different variables, uppercase X and lowercase X. So if you intend to do something like this, let's see what we get here. All right, it doesn't, it doesn't blow up. So we were able to use X and assign it to eight, but we didn't declare the variable. Well something fishy is going on and we'll get to the bottom of it before the end of this course but the key to this is that we did not we're not working with the same x as we're working with here all right so let's just get rid of that but those are the rules it has to begin with the letter a dollar sign or underscore the rest of the name can have pretty much anything including numbers but no spaces or other special characters can't use any keywords for names of variables and uh, be aware that uh, variable names are case sensitive. Now there are code conventions and these again are just good practices. The first one is that variable names should be descriptive. And unfortunately, uh, X, Y, and Z are not very descriptive names. Ideally, we would use something like maybe, um, let's go down here. So let uh, first number equal seven, and then let second number equals three, and then we could use that in line number 12 instead. Uh, here's some better ones actually, like if we wanted to capture information or represent information like the first name or let zip code equals 7502, and so on, all right? So use names that represent the thing you're trying to store and it, from an application perspective. What meaning does this variable have inside of our application? Meaningful variable names. The second is camel casing. So if you are gonna use multiple words, you should use this format called camel casing. And that means that the first word of your variable name should be lowercase. So the F in first is always lowercase. But then any subsequent names that we append or words that we append together should have a capital letter. So you can see that I followed this convention every single time in lines 15 through 18. Lowercase Z in zip code, capital C in zip code. All right, so camel casing. Third one is to be consistent, and that is to always follow the same kind of naming convention. Um, and this would be true kind of across, not just the names of, of variable names, but for every other type of identifier that we wind up creating in our application. Stay consistent, pick one style, and stay with it throughout the remainder of the application. And then the other is to not rely on case. We've already seen the danger of that, but what if I intentionally want to do let zip code equals 60459. What we've just done, while it's grammatically correct from JavaScript's perspective, uh, and those are two separate variables in line 18 and 20, we've introduced some subtle um, dissonance in the application. Now it's more difficult for me to see that these are actually two different variables. And maybe I intended to do that, but that's poor programming practice. We might choose uh, maybe a better name like first zip code and second zip code. That might be a better way to go about that same sort of thing, okay? So those are the code conventions and the naming rules for variables. And that's just about everything you need to know about variables, just about. There's actually a little bit more that we need to talk about and we'll finish up this discussion in the next, in the next video when we talk about the values that we're actually assigning into variables and their data types. And we'll talk about that next. See you there, thanks.